Here we go. Eight hours and 40 minutes. It'll be like 10 hours for us. It'll be a long day of driving. There's honestly not much that can go wrong with oh, me. God. you guys that is perfection right my there. name is Billy I'm Sierra and this is our dog Jetty we usually live and travel on a boat a few different boats in fact but now we are driving across the country as our new boat is being built join us on this all-new Tula adventure as we drive bike hike paddle and sail across the good old USA don't forget to subscribe All right, you guys, we're getting ready to leave. Sierra's just finishing up a morning run with Jetty. How was it? I just wanted to give you guys a quick look around here. It's a pretty cool area. So right over here towards the north is this big bay. Our friends Dasher and Nate were telling us they kite and wing in it all the time and it's a great spot to teach kiting and winging. And then over there, that's the beach we were on yesterday, like directly that way and that whole strip is the beach. This little bay, there's a little inlet by the rocks that actually goes out into the ocean over there. And then here is the campground, Huguenot. And then over here, is the St. John River, St. John's River, and that's the big inlet that goes straight out that way into the ocean. Big, huge ships come through here, and all sorts of shrimp boats and everything. And then that's the entrance coming in from that direction. Pretty cool spot. So I'm just gonna restrap these boards. We're gonna get ready to go and uh, and take off. Heading north. We got like an eight-hour drive today, which means for us it's more like ten hours because we go real slow and stop a lot. All right, we're all set. We hit the dump station. We hit the freshwater station because fortunately I don't like driving nine hours with a completely full tank of fresh water, but we don't know if we'll be able to get fresh water on Cape Lookout or at the ferry before we get there. So, might as well just fill up now and we'll be ready. Here we go, eight hours and 40 minutes. It's gonna be like 10 hours for us. It's gonna be a long day of driving. In other news, this is the very first day of us using our brand new camera. If you guys have... Oh. <laughs> uh, I just had my computer transferring a lot of footage and the hard drive just got ripped out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's restart that three hour process. Anyways, I'm sure you guys noticed in the last uh, five, 10 videos that our microphone was not working. It was actually the jack on our camera that got water in it, but we had insurance on the camera, so we sent it back. Took like three weeks to get back, but now we have a brand new camera. Oh! Can you tell the difference? Hopefully it's clearer for you guys. Less than three hours to go. 
I don't know what happened along the way, but I was working on the computer on a video and getting stuff onto Patreon, and somehow I missed all of Georgia, and it is currently peach season, and we missed Georgia peaches. How did you do that to me? <laughs> oh, well. Luckily, when we went to the grocery store yesterday in Florida at Aldi's, we found some Georgia peaches. Not as good as the market peaches, but they were pretty dang good. How you doing? Pretty good. It's nice having AC. It's nice having a stereo. I only have three lights on in the dash, so that's not too bad. They're not beeping anymore. Yeah, no beeping noise anymore. However, do we need to fill them in so we don't get a trillion comments about why we're not wearing a seatbelt? There's no excuse to not wearing a seatbelt, but my seatbelts are so funny, they get stuck sometimes. And they're stuck right now, they won't come out. They're stuck on both of them. There really is no excuse to not wearing seatbelts, and we're gonna get about 800 comments saying that as well. We know, we know. We're aware. But anyways, three steps, three steps forward, AC, radio, no beeping, one step backward, broken seatbelt. That's all right. As long as we keep going forward. <laughs> We're moving in the right direction. We have less than three hours to go until we're at the ferry parking in North Carolina. We're going to spend the night at the ferry parking lot. I think we're allowed. And then tomorrow we have a car ferry at 930 where we will hop on board and bring the truck out to Cape Lookout where we will be camping on the beach. Pray that my no -seam netting is really no -seam proof because if it's not, we're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> Update on Jetty. Here. I'm pretty sure we're allowed to park and just camp here overnight because we're taking the ferry in the morning I saw that in a YouTube video actually somewhere. So hopefully that's still the case and no one wakes us up in the middle of the night And we shouldn't possibly miss our ferry Nope <laughs> It's right there Cool spot right on the water Where are we Jetty? Are you a good girl? Okay, time to walk the dog Alright, we're here. I 
fully air down on the way with these nifty little air down tools. We're like 20 PSI, which is not super low, but for this truck it's pretty low. We have big tires, big fat tires. So we're on the beach right away. I guess so. We're only four wheel drive cars can come on this ferry. I think so. Um, I hope I have my pass all figured out and everything. <laughs> Y'all ever been before? No. No? Okay. We've been, we've been to Shackleford by boat. Okay. All right, from here to the lighthouse down the beach is going to be about 12, 12 and a half miles. Okay. What are the most important things? Air pressure. Yep. What have you got in her? 20. You'll be good. Yeah. If you have any trouble, just air down. Don't one. spin her down. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Put the flag up there open. There's a bath house up there at the dune line that has flush toilets and hot showers sometimes. My name is Doug. I stay in this next cabin here. Alright. We got the low down and where do you want to go first? I had a feeling that we were gonna have the opportunity to get on the earlier ferry just because maybe there was a spot, but that's what happened. The guy, the captain came over, he's like, I have you on the 9.30. I was like, do you have room on this one? He's like, yep, you wanna go now? I was like, yeah. So we hopped on this one. We just got to call the place to pay them um, over the phone with the credit card, because they weren't open yet. Just a quick little, what, 30, 40 minute ride over. We aired down on the ferry on the way. Now we're here. Ferry captain was super nice too. Yeah, both ferry guys were super nice. Just whipping up some breakfast here and some coffee. The waves are looking pretty good out there, so I think we're gonna have to eat real quick and get out for a surf. Hmm. Right out the back door. Whoa. Look at this wave. Oh man, that's some good waves out there. Fun, huh? What's your temperature? For you, definitely. I haven't decided. Here you go. What? Here you go. Yeah. Waves are looking super fun and oh man. We just had some breakfast, a few sips of coffee, and we gotta get out there. It's low tide right now, like dead low. And that's gonna make the, these waves the best that they can be because it'll be the most shallow on the sandbar out there. And they're already a little mushy, but they still look like, they still look like a blast. So we're gonna get out, out there and surf a little and then we'll, uh, we'll probably cruise up the beach and explore some more. Jetty's just gonna chill out in her nice shady spot. I think she's okay. You don't think she'll handle herself? No. Good girl. You're gonna chill out, huh? Watch us surf. You can watch. Yeah. Water's not bad at all, but we're definitely not in South Florida.
on the wrong direction. Did you guard the truck, Ross? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Good girl. some super fun little waves this morning. We went all the way as far north as you can in this area. We're on what's called South Core Banks. You could go to South Core Banks, North Core Banks, and then there's like a Shackleford Banks that we've been to before by boat with the wild horses, but you can't drive on there. You have to take a ferry, probably another ferry. Anyway, we're on South Core Banks, and we went as far north as you can on South Core Banks, and then they block off the rest of the area all the way up to the inlet. We are driving south now on South Core Banks, and we're gonna probably go all the way down. It's like 14 miles down to the end, um, and there's a lighthouse down there and an old Coast Guard station and stuff. There are some spots where we can't drive, but it seems like for the most part, we can drive all the way down there. So we're gonna go check it out, probably find a nice quiet place to camp on the beach. And uh, yeah, there, look, there's some spots on the beach where you can't drive, so we have to take this like inner path behind the dunes, and then um, we'll pop out on the beach here in a little bit. One thing we do have to be very careful of is uh, paying attention to our fuel, because if we run out of fuel way down there, 14 miles away, then we're kind of in trouble. And on our park information thing, it says, do not get stuck, do not run out of fuel, because there's nobody here to come help you, and it'll be very, very, very expensive. They, they do have fuel, actually, back by the, where the ferry dropped us off. But not so. where we're going. 
not where we're going, but it's only 14 miles away. I mean, four-wheel drive, it does suck a lot of fuel, but we and could... And the camper on the back. And the camper on the back, all the weight and everything. But we could uh, we could cruise back and get diesel. I don't know how much it is, probably expensive, but it could save us in a jam. So a few tips for beach driving, if you guys never done it before. I've done it a lot on Long Island when we were in college, out in the east end of Long Island with this truck. And there's honestly not much that can go wrong with beach. Oh be God, Billy. Uh, <laughs> there's not much that could go wrong with beach driving if you have four wheel drive and you air down enough. Like you see people stuck all the time and all they have to do is just air down their tires more. So we're aired down to 20 PSI, but our tires are big, like down to 20 PSI for our tires and how much weight we have is pretty good. When you air down your tires, it like, it makes them really flat and much wider. So you ride up higher on the sand. You don't dig into the sand. So yeah, as long as you air down enough and you have four wheel drive, I mean, and you're driving like not an idiot, it should be pretty good. You just gotta watch out for like big, big berms and stuff like that. You just wanna stay in the flat part of the beach. And then the, the, the harder part, the better. Sometimes down by the water, it's a little bit harder, but you don't wanna drive in the water because you get your truck all salty and stuff like that. And if the tide comes up on you, then you could get stuck there. Shouldn't you also have those plank things? I mean, again, like, people have them, but if you air down enough, you don't need them. I've watched the Dodge Mahal have to use Yeah, but he before. didn't air down enough. Definitely. Definitely not. Oh, we're coming out onto the beach now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a good idea to have those planks, what do they call them, the max tracks or whatever, and then to have a, a jack and jack board and shovel, and we have all that stuff except the max tracks. We don't have max tracks, but we have a jack and shovel, um, tow rope and everything like that. Fellow truckie, we should have names and a handshake. Don't you think it'd be a good idea to have like a certain handshake every time you saw somebody in like a truck camper? You think van lifers have those? We're just, we're not van lifers because we're in a truck. Like old, like We're truckies, like a different breed. Truckies do this. Do you know what a truckie like is? A Star Trek? Person? Yeah, people are obsessed with Star Trek. I think they do that. We could do like the rocket power, like boogity, boogity, boogity. We gotta make up our own. Yeah, we need a new one. a good little spot where we're gonna set up camp for today and probably tomorrow we'll just hang out here there's a nice little break right in front of us or right behind us and we're just a few miles down from the very southern end uh, where the lighthouse is and everything so we'll probably go check that out tomorrow or the next day there's supposed to be some wind so I, I think down there is gonna be the spot where we're gonna want to kite so we're just gonna get our, our camp set up and make some lunch and we scavenge some firewood along the way so maybe we'll cook over the fire tonight for dinner this is cool it's cool that there's still uh, like you can still do this on the East Coast like I think there's a few other spots like this but this is such a big long beach that you can just drive up and down and camp wherever you want and the logistics logistics were pretty dang easy the ferry was expensive it was 130 bucks or so round trip but still not bad um, the four-wheel drive permit through the National Seashore I believe um, was only like 25 bucks and that's it beautiful out here
So from our trip last year, we learned that we really needed a mat to put out by the front door. So if you're in uh, mud or sand or whatever you're in, you have this area where you're not tracking as much as all of that stuff into the camper. We'll probably put our chairs right on there and it'll be perfect. And I don't know if you guys know this, but we actually have an Amazon storefront page where we put everything that we test and like on there, such as the mat and the chairs and all our grill and all that stuff. So if you're ever wondering about a product we use, it's probably on our Amazon site. If it's a boat item, it's on our catamaran supply. We have storefront on there too. Um, just like two easy places to put all of our favorite gear. And most of that is also linked on our website. getting close to dinner time so we're gonna whip up start whipping up some food we have some tuna that uh, Sarah's sister's boyfriend brought back from the Bahamas thank you Brian we're gonna cook up some tuna I think what we're gonna do is marinate it and probably some teriyaki or soy sauce and garlic and honey and sesame oil if we have any of that and then uh, we'll let that marinate for a little bit I have a fire ready to go out there so we'll start the fire let that burn down a bit and then we'll put them on our little fish grates and and we'll cook them over the fire um i don't know what else we'll have with it we'll ask sierra she kind of does the meal planning around here so probably a bunch of vegetables and stuff like that so let's uh let's get this marinated and then we'll start the fire and get that going so i got all the ingredients i could find it'll be pretty simple pretty simple marinade we'll do some garlic in here take the skin off the garlic first and then Do some ground ginger here. Throw a little bit of honey. Not too much. We'll finish it off with a bunch of soy sauce. This is salty already. for a bit. So we'll start the fire. All right. You're allowed to have fires here on the beach at Cape Lookout, but it has to be below the high tide line. So we're a good ways from the truck back there, but we're below the high tide line. So many of you guys commented when we cooked over a fire in one of our trimaran videos and you said just dig out a little channel off to the side and pull the coals over there and that's where you can cook and it'll be less hot. So that's what we're going to do. And when I say cook the tuna, I just mean like we're actually going to keep it pretty hot and we're just going to sear it. Like we'll have it on for like a minute on each side, pretty dang hot and just sear it on the outside and that's about it. still a little too much of a fire but the wind is a little tricky I'm just gonna keep flipping them a lot it's 
Sierra just pulled off the vegetables. Now it's time for the tuna. you guys oh my god that is perfection right there wow let's see how the uh, oh my goodness I think that's gonna be just perfect I hate the sound of the sand. you don't like the squeaky sand it reminds me of like when your windshield wiper is going and there's it's not raining today in Cape Lookout? Yes I did. It's such a cool spot. We're all by ourselves. The water's blue. We have a breeze so we're not hot. We had good dinner and yeah it was a good day. Did you have fun? Yeah I had a great time. Thank you guys as always for coming along and watching and hanging out with us. We get asked all the time how you can support our channel so how can people support our channel? Make sure you subscribe like comment if you so happen to like this video or if you didn't like this video you can comment whatever you want and share it if you think somebody else may like it <laughs> or you can join us on patreon and get jetty a dog bone because right now she's angry there's a lot of other ways you guys could support if you wanted to um we always have that all linked down in the description so check that out man it's been so fun doing this truck camper thing and being able to drive on the beach and camp on the beach and explore new areas. And we can't wait to do a ton more of it and bring you guys along with us. So um, let us know. Yeah, just leave us a comment below. Let us know what you like about it, where you want to see us going with the truck camper until we get our new catamaran in February. We're just going to hang out tomorrow. We're going to probably work all day editing and answering messages and emails and comments and stuff like that so the next day after that's gonna be super wind windy it's gonna be a really good kiteboarding and wing wing foiling day here in cape lookout so we cannot wait for that pray for wind it's gonna be like 20 30 knots all day long so we'll bring you along and show you some kiteboarding and wing foiling and stuff in the area and probably explore some more of cape lookout so let us know if you guys have any questions about this area as well and if you're only here for sailing, don't worry because we are driving to go sailing in Washington in September. And, and hopefully other places along the way, but that one is solidified, so. Orcas, sea wind. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time.
no way, ain't doing that again. Too close, too close for comfort. We just got this camera back. Hardware. We just got this back. <laughs> Did it hit it? I think so, but. I got, we gotta get that shot. I hope you appreciate these different angles because they require a lot of running and camera placement on hot sand. 